Hi, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates. And the video today that I'm going to be speaking on is called You Know You're Thinking Like a Victim If... And this actually is a very important topic. I think that a victim mentality is cancer. And I think it's one of the most destructive uh, things in a marriage. And my main goal with every couple or individual person that I work with is always to do whatever I can to shift them out of having a victim mentality. There's a, <coughs> a, a verse in the Bible, in Proverbs, it says, do not strongly rebuke a mocker, lest he hate you. Um, but unfortunately, uh, in our work here as counselors and therapists, I think that's our job, is to find out as much truth about our clients as we possibly can by gathering their family background information and then uh, feeding it back to them and helping them to know who they are and where they came from and what patterns there are in their family of origins and you know why did you pick this particular person to marry and to point out any uh, victim thinking or uh, addictions that they might have. Um, honestly I had a bit of a rough week in the uh, therapy office this week. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I would say probably anywhere from 15 to 20 percent of probably the general population, but um, particularly uh, the, the people that I work with. Um, it may not be that small in the general population, but it's probably 15 to 20 percent of people who really can't hear feedback. They're not teachable. They're uh, what I would call a mocker. A mocker is somebody who's defensive, arrogant, well-defended, defensive, shame-based, um, stuck in a victim mentality, and they're not really coming to counseling to get help. They're coming to counseling to complain and to indict their spouse and to have a place to just vent and triangulate all over the place. Um, triangulating is just venting to a third party about the person that you're having trouble with. And I tell people that uh, just because it's your hour and you're paying for it doesn't mean I'm going to sit there and let you triangle to me. Uh, I tell them if you want to triangle and vent and play the victim for an hour, I'll do that. The fee's a thousand dollars an hour for that um, because it's uh, unpleasant to be on the butt end of somebody's venting and triangling. Nobody ever takes me up on that. <laughs> I don't know why. So this week it just became especially clear to me just how, with that 15 to 20 percent of my clients, uh, of people in general, just how extremely unpopular and difficult to swallow our core message is. Because I think we, we tend to live in a society that thinks like a victim. If there is a problem, it's somebody else's fault. And there's a bad guy and a victim. And our message is unflinching that in marriage, there never, ever, ever is a victim. There is always simply the right person that you chose to marry and reasons why you chose to, to marry them and the reasons why have to do with reenacting the wounds from your childhood. So if you haven't ever heard me pontificate on this subject, which is uh, my favorite subject, because it's the most important subject for clients. You can't think like a victim and do therapy. You can't think like a victim and get better. The world is fair. The 
uh, universe and Mother Nature have a plan, and your spouse is not your problem, you're your problem. So let me pontificate and help you identify what it sounds like uh, when somebody is in a victim-y place and they have victim-y thinking and victim-y behavior. I'm going to go through a list here. The first is, is if you need to compulsively vent and triangle about the bad guy to anybody who will listen. And uh, I get clients like this who they lose track of time because I ask them a question and they're not answering the question, they're venting about a third party. And it's sort of they lose, they, they don't pay attention to what's going on in the room or what's going on with their spouse or what's going on with me. They're just on a mission to vent and get it off their chest. They use words, victim words, like unfair. Whenever I hear the word unfair from a client, I know they're thinking like a victim. They use word like, words like resentment. I uh, used to do a group and there was a fella in the group and he was uh, somebody else's client and he wasn't used to the rigor that I hold about victim thinking and he was going through a divorce and he would use the R word in group, resentment, every week. And I, I would confront him on it every... I got to where I was just grabbing a tissue and throwing it on the ground like an NFL ref would drop a flag. And it wouldn't say anything. I'd just drop the tissue. He knew he was uh, uh, using the R word and venting and triangling like a victim. And he would uh, then refocus and put the focus of his work where it should be, which is on himself. Because that's the only person on this planet that you have any chance of changing and healing and fixing is you. So put your energies there. Uh, a word, uh, another victim word is bitterness. And if you use the word bitter, then you need a paradigm shift. You need to know you ain't got nothing to be bitter about with adults in significant other relationships in your life. Now, as children, absolutely, positively, we were victimized. But not as adults. As adults... We choose who we choose, and we uh, allow them to stay in our lives, and we're responsible for our lives. Another indication that you th are thinking like a victim is you tune out the needs of the person that you have captive, that you are dumping on, uh, due to your urgent need to get it out. And, and these people, they really do feel like captives. I've had many people with uh, victim-y parents and you call them up and they want to hold you hostage on the phone for an hour venting about the neighbors, the you know, the spouse, the health problems, the doctor, whatever. In therapy, if you focus all your time and energy and words on the misdeeds of your particular bad guy, rather than the person you have any hope of changing, then you're thinking like a victim. People who are doing quality recovery work, they come in, they talk about themselves, period. They focus their energy and their, their uh, disappointment and their regrets and their focus of what's dysfunctional on themselves and not on others. They may mention others in passing, but the focus is yourself. Somebody who thinks like a victim, they sound whiny and martyr-like and critical. Uh, they get to defensive and reactive when the captive dumping object has the audacity to turn the mirror around and point it on them. And then they say, I just want support. Why can't you just give me support when they hear any feedback that would implicate themselves as having much to do with responsibility for their very own lives. They tend to walk around angry and critical. They tend to be road ragers. They tend to, to think of the world as I'm out driving around and there's a bunch of idiots out there because uh, they are angry, because they do feel treated unfairly and they have a lot of pent-up anger. So those are some uh, ways that you can tell if you're being a victim. So my favorite quote 
is by a woman named Sherry Argov. She says, truly powerful people do not explain why they need respect. They simply don't engage with people who do not give it to them. I'm going to read it again. Truly powerful people do not explain why they need respect. They simply don't engage with anyone who doesn't give it to them. Another way you can tell you're stuck in victim thinking is if you complain that you're not getting respect. Um, if you're not getting respect in a relationship, no matter what relationship it is, um, that is your issue. Why would you settle for being in a relationship where you don't get respect? So you, get, you are getting exactly the amount of respect that you are commanding and that you are settling for. Trust me. You are getting the respect that you deserve because you're settling if you're not doing the right things that will command the respect of the people in your life. So now I'm going to read a quote by myself. <coughs> sort of a paragraph here, and I just uh, thought it uh, really captured what I'm trying to say in the video. If you choose to have disrespectful, unsafe, untrustworthy, dangerous people in your life, that is your responsibility. Unfortunately, our love lives are built upon strong unconscious attractions to people we eventually find out are psychological clones of the people who hurt us the most growing up. Unfortunately, that's exactly what romantic love is. People talk about love is a mystery. Love's not a mystery. Love's very simple. It's just different for every person. If you make a list of your mom, your dad, and any, any other caretakers, whether it be a grandparent or a step-parent, and you put their qualities on a board, and you're honest, and you're not being too defended or defensive, uh, that's what love is to you, my friends, unfortunately. You're going to pick people like that. Uh, if you grew up with rage, you're going to pick a rager, or you're going to become a rager. Um, if you uh, uh, grow up being sexually abused, uh, you're going to probably pick somebody who uh, abuses your children sexually. If you grow up with an, with an alcoholic, you're, you're probably going to marry an alcoholic. If you grow up with somebody who's controlling and critical, you will pick somebody who's controlling and cr critical. If you're, good, if you're uh, abandoned as a child, you will pick somebody who will abandon you in your love relationship. So that's what love is. If you don't know what love is, and then you don't seek to mitigate the damages and protect yourself, you're sort of going to be like a lamb being led to the slaughter emotionally. You're going to get your butt handed to you in love over and over again, and that can lead to bitterness, but what I'm telling you is it should not. Uh, these various ones who are handing you your butt in relationship and kicking your butt, uh, it's the universe trying to teach you a lesson about yourself. you got to pay attention. If you're picking the same kind of person over and over, that ain't about you know, all the bad guys out there, that's only about you and your wounded childhood, and that's why you pick who you pick. So, this may sound like bad news, like I'm, you know, blaming, you know, blaming the victim. There are no victims. I am, I'm not blaming anybody. Uh, I'm telling you the good news that if you can control this, if this is your issue, that's fabulous, because then you can fix it. If, if the world really is... You can grow up in a healthy home and go out and marry a psychopath and he can make your life miserable. That's a scary world. It just isn't true. If you grow up in a healthy home, you will not even go out on a date with a psychopath. You can go out on a date with somebody who's healthy. You're going to marry somebody who's healthy. Unfortunately, not too many healthy folks out there. Uh, you're, you're going to grow up wounded like the rest of us. and You're going to pick somebody wounded and well-qualified to hurt you the way your parents did. I'm just reporting this deal. 
Uh, I didn't make it up, but it is the truth, and you would be wise to take that in and read a lot of the stuff we have on the site and look at videos and understand that uh, your childhood is all about your love life. Your love life is all about your childhood. So relationship pain, marital pain is Mother Nature's best tool to reach you, to break you, to humble you, to open up your defenses, to open up your mind, to prepare you to do work on yourself. And it's a blessing and you should thank your spouse who's hurt you and uh, get involved in your own personal recovery work and quit venting and triangling about anybody else and quit thinking like a victim and uh, the world is a good place and relationships are a laboratory for learning and I hope this video has spoken to you I hope you get what I'm trying to say and I encourage you to join and to subscribe to our video channel uh, to visit our uh, website, FamilyTreeCounseling.com, and to look at my ebooks that are on the website. Uh, one in particular, uh, if you have abandonment issues, managing abandonment issues through recovery. And I will have a book on shame coming out in the fall, I'm running a little bit behind on that due to uh, circumstances uh, beyond my control. Not a victim. <laughs> I was just uh, ill and I, I, I couldn't write. So. Anyway, I enjoyed this, and God bless you, and uh, I hope this has touched your soul and changed your heart. So, thank you very much.